And um, you know, when I was on my way here, I was thinking about something that happened this morning, and uh, you know, I was getting ready and everything, and I have a six-year-old daughter, and I'm getting ready to take her over to my in-laws because they watch her during the day, and so she knows where I'm coming today. I just asked her, I said, hey, you know, Brianna, her name's Brianna, how do you think Dad's going to do today? I'm going to go talk to a bunch of these kids and everything, and uh, she goes, uh, good. I'm like, okay, you know, you're not making me feel real confident here, right? It's like, oh, you know, do I need to focus on anything? She goes, yeah. I'm like, oh, great. Just when I'm getting ready, my daughter now she's going to criticize me. What do I need to focus on? She goes, you're speaking. I'm like, well, that's what I'm going to do. I mean, you're telling me I need to work on this. So I'm getting a little nervous, right? But I'm excited, too. And that's what I was thinking of on the way here today, because nervous and excitement, and I'm thinking that maybe some of you are going through that right now. Because right? you're getting ready. How many of you graduated so far? Graduated this year? You graduated? Oh, no. No one graduate this year? Graduate next year? Yeah, how I many? Yeah. So you guys, you know, you got another year to go, but now it's getting like getting a little bit real, right? It's not like when you're freshman, you just come in, you're like, everything's new, and then by the time you're a sophomore, you're kind of cruising, you know how it's going there, but now you're getting juniors and you're going into senior year and you gotta start thinking, oh my god, what am I gonna do? I gotta start thinking about college. What am I gonna get into the one that I want to go? What am I gonna do with my life? What kind of job am I gonna get? So it's just, um, it's it's something that I know what you're dealing with a little bit because, you know, I actually did graduate a long time ago. I'm not going to say when because I don't want the caveman jokes coming out. But I'm going to say this. There were no dinosaurs roaming the earth when I graduated. And, uh, you know, they didn't have iTunes, but we did have CDs. Okay? I'm a little bit recent. But, you know, I know what you're going through because I, I went through that. And when I graduated, I, I was scared to death. I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. And, you know, I have parents and everybody pressuring me, you know, are you going to be a doctor? What college are you going to go to? You know, are you going to be a lawyer? What are you going to do? And I'm like, oh, God, I have no idea. Thinking, well, you know, maybe something will come up. And I kept thinking about that, but I was bouncing kind of job to job and just really wasn't happy with my life. I had a lot of problems going on, had health problems. I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder at one point. I was depressed all the time over this. I just kept thinking, man, is something going to come up? Something will come up. But it's like days went by, months went by, years are going by. It's like I woke up overnight and all of a sudden I'm in my 30s. And I'm thinking, oh my God, what am I doing with my life? I have no idea what I want to do. And I'm freaked out. And I'm coming home from work one day and I'm stuck in the middle of traffic. And I just kept thinking this thought over and over and over in my head. It's like, is this all my life supposed to be about? And I kept thinking, you know, i got to do something. If I don't change something, if I don't figure something out, I'm going to live the rest of my life like this. I can't do it. So I made a decision that day. I remember I just I said, I'm going to figure out what it is I'm supposed to do, what my dreams are in life, and I'm going to do everything in my power to make it happen. I'm going to die trying. That's it. I know it sounds kind of extreme. So extreme that the alarm just went off. But that's just kind of where I was, you know. I'm going to be honest about it. It's just where I was at the time. And, and uh, you know, Luckily, I wish I wish I could just say that like everything flipped overnight and I became this huge success, made millions of dollars, and I'm living on a yacht over in Korea. But obviously I'm not, I wouldn't be here. But what did happen is that I was able to turn my life around. And it didn't happen overnight, but I turned it 180 degrees in the opposite direction. And I'm just in a way better place now. And what I came here to share with you guys is just some of kind of like the tools that, that I used. There was like these five principles that I kind of figured out. But why I'm here is because I wish to God that I had these. I, I wish I knew this stuff when I was your age because it would have saved me a lot of time. It would have made things happen a lot faster for me and helped me figure some things out. Because I know it's a little bit scary when you're thinking of getting out there and what am I going to do it and start thinking of all this. There's some added stress and some pressure now and you've got enough that you're dealing with. So I'm going to share these with you, but I'll make a deal. I'm not going to sit up here and, and tell you that I know all the answers to life and all that because I don't. It's just some things that I figured out. And if when I'm done, if some or all or maybe just one thing that I say makes sense to you and you feel like you can use it, then I just encourage you, go ahead and take it, run with it, apply it, do what you can. And if not, if nothing makes sense to you, you don't get much from it, hey, that's cool too. Right? And, uh, I just thank you for coming and listening. Is that fair enough? Is that cool? Yeah. All right. That's cool. So um, the way you can remember them, I, just, I call them principles, dream principles, D-R-E-A-M. There's five of them. Easy way to remember it. All you gotta do is remember dream. And um, they're just some things that I think can help you 
when you're feeling a lot of that fear and uncertainty, just help you kind of alleviate some of that and give you a little bit of direction so that you can feel a little bit more confident, a little bit more empowered, and a little, more, a little bit more in control of your future. So, I'm setting off alarms every day. All right, you guys. So, um, I'm just going to get right into it. So, the first one I'm going to talk about, I wonder if I can use this board. Is it okay if I use this board? Sure. All right. So, we're going to start with the letter D, right? Right there. That's the first one. Now, hopefully I'll be able to reach over there right, so I'm not like six foot five. Anyway, the first principle. It's the most important thing, because you guys are getting ready to start thinking about careers now, right? You're doing this whole week-long job like boot camp, right? You've got to start thinking, what am I going to do? Well, I mean, the first thing that we've got to think about before we move in a direction is to define your dream. It's the deep. Define your dream. Right? And what's crazy is that so many people today, they're all over the place. They've never done this. And it sounds so simple, but they're living the, their lives. They're miserable with what they're doing. They're unhappy because they've never taken the time to define their dream. And a lot of them that have actually gave up on it. Just don't go after it. So it's the most important thing you have to have because if you look at your, your dream, is, it's nothing more than a vision for your life. So you start getting a vision because if you don't have that, it's like getting in a car and you're going to drive from Milpitas and you're going to go across the United States. Now, you're going to end up somewhere if you get in a car and go, but where are you going to end up? Because if you don't know where your destination is, it doesn't matter where you go, right? You're going to get lost along the way. But when you've got a vision for your life and you've got a dream, you know, okay, this is me. This is what I want for my life. That's where I'm going. Now you've got a destination on the map. Now you know where you're going. So that's all your dream is. Now, how many of you know, you're certain when you graduate, what you're going to do with your life? How many of you? Yeah? Don't feel bad. I didn't know either. I had no clue. Now, if you know, you're way ahead of the game. So like I said, you've done the work that most people have never done. But even if you don't, I'm just going to share with you three quick tips to help you as you define what your dream is. So kind of jogs your brain and gets you, gets you thinking of some things. But the first thing is to be specific. Any dream you've got, it's got to be specific. So if I ask you, if I say, Nate, what's your dream? You tell me, I just want to get a good job. Well, what does a good job look like? Right? Your idea of a good job, someone else's idea of a good job, it could be many different things, right? But what does that look like for you? What do you imagine yourself doing? What kind of skills do you have? What do people tell you you're really good at? What are you passionate about? What do you imagine your life being like? What's your vision, right? Be very specific about your dream. Get it so clear that when you close your eyes, you can see a picture of it in your mind. Second step is to know what it looks like when you get there. A lot of times we can have dreams and all these goals, but what does it really look like when you're living? Start thinking about what does my life look like? What do I see? What are the things that I'm doing every day? Who are the people I'm hanging out with? What do I hear? What's going on? What's different about my life when I'm living my dream than it is now? Picture it, figure it out. And then the third thing, probably the most important, is to define your dream according to what you want not based on other people's opinions or beliefs about you. What I mean is this. If somebody sits there and tells you that your dream's stupid, that it's impossible, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough, you can't measure up to the other people that are doing it, so don't even try. But if you feel passionate about a dream, you feel excited, you feel that's what you're meant to do, base that dream on what you want to do. Don't listen to the naysay. Let them talk about it. So once we define your, your dream now, you've got the vision, you know the destination where you're going. But there's a hang-up that happens with a lot of people. I used to have this client, I, I, I worked for 14 years as a personal trainer. And I worked with this, this client, his name was Pat. And Pat came to me because he had a lot of problems with his knees, he had back pain, it was getting really bad. His dream, one of his dreams, was just to be able to go run again. Because, I mean, we could do it, but this guy hadn't been running in three years because he was in so much pain. And then he was playing golf, he liked playing golf, and it ended up that he was having to give up golf because he was in pain as well. So I worked with him for six months, and I'm seeing that, that his knee pain's a lot better, his back's like 80% better, and I'm thinking, you know what, I, I think Pat can run. So Pat comes in for a workout, he doesn't know what I'm going to do to him, right? And so he's all, hey, you know, ready for his workout. I said, Pat, I want you to run today. Pat looks at me like I just went to for Cocoa Puffs, right? I don't know if you know, but I got bad knees and bad back. I can't run. 
Pat, come on. We've been working at this for six months. Your pain's gone. It's going to be shot. Now, all I want to do is get Pat on the treadmill for like two minutes. Just, just test it out. Just two minutes to see what you can do. So I talk him into it, get him up there. Pat doesn't run for two minutes. Guy ran for eight minutes straight. He stopped. Gets off the treadmill. He's just like, he's jacked, right? Like, oh my God, I'm not even in pain. Great. And one of the biggest things that I learned from that moment was the same thing with, with a lot of us. When we have dreams and everything, there's obstacles that get in our way. But the obstacles, they're not physical ones. It's not that we physically can't realize our dreams. Obstacles are up here. They're in our minds, right? Same thing with Pat. The guy physically could run. He knew his body could do it, but he didn't believe it up here. He didn't. So these are the things. They're the voices in our head. I call them the inner bullies that we've got. It's these voices that tell us why we're not good enough, why we don't fit in, why, why we don't come from the right background, why we're not... We don't measure up to everybody else that's doing what we want to do and we can't do it. So when those kind of those inner bullies come up, we've got to have a way to, to silence them, to disempower them, right? So just remember, if that ever comes up, you've got that vision, you've got that dream, but you've got those bullies in your head telling you why you can't do it, just think of three things. Stop, drop, replace. Stop the naysayer, stop the bullies every time you start those thoughts, I can't because. Every time you catch yourself saying something, you're talking to someone, you're talking negative about yourself. I'd like to do that, but I can't because I'm not good as they are. Those people who are doing what I want to do. I'm not smart enough. Stop what you're saying. Just stop. I don't care if you're mid sentence Just stop. Drop it. Like Get it out of your vocabulary. Get it out of your mind. Just clear it out. And replace Say something about yourself. It doesn't matter right now if you don't believe it, but if you say it enough, you believe it eventually. And what you believe, you will act. You will think and you will act according to your beliefs, whether they're true or not. Empower yourself with a thought. I don't care what it is. I don't need to be better than anybody else. I just need to be the best version of me that I can be. It's good enough. Stop, drop, the place. So now... Once you've got that dream defined, now guess what? You remove those obstacles. You clear those, those negative thoughts out. You've got like this pathway, right? There's nothing in the way of your dream. Now, here's the thing. We've got to go one more step because in order to get there, it's not just going to fall in your lap, right? You've got to walk the path. So how are we going to walk the path? And I should have said the second principle is the R, remove the obstacles, right? But now we come to the E, third principle. But what it has to do with is your expectations, right? There's a reason why we have a dream is because it's something that we've never done before. And the things that we have to do, sometimes they're a little bit uncomfortable. We've got to do some things that we've never done before. It gets scary. But you've got to expect more from yourself. That's the third. Expect more from yourself. Because if you don't raise your expectations, guess what? Nobody else is going to expect more from you either. No one can do it for you. And the lower your expectations are, the less you achieve, and the less you achieve, the less opportunities you have available to you. The opposite is true, too. You expect more from yourself, you achieve more. When you achieve more, guess what? Possibilities start opening up. Opportunities start coming your way. You've got to expect more from yourself. How do we do it? Well, start setting some goals, right? Now, I'm not talking about crazy goals. You don't have to come up with a cure for cancer. You don't have to invent the iPhone 20. Just some simple goals. How can I get from where I am today, right here, one step closer to where I want to be over here? Just one step. Set a goal that inspires you, right? Goals that motivate you. Goals that are exciting and goals that challenge you to step outside of your comfort zone. Because when you start doing that, guess what? And you commit. you got to commit to achieving the goals. You can't just set it and be wishy-washy and not put your effort in there, right? You've got to do the work. But if you're willing to do it, you start to achieve the goals, guess what happens? Start to build confidence in yourself. Build confidence in who you are and what you're capable of. And then when you build that confidence, you start setting more goals, you start achieving more goals, you start getting more confident. And you see, right, it builds. It's a self-fulfilling cycle. But you've got to expect more from yourself. So now, we've got a fourth our principles are A. How many of you guys are NBA fans? And gals? Yeah? You guys uh, watching the finals? 
you vote for me. Me? Yeah, me too. LeBron James fans? No. Me neither. I'm a Lakers fan, but I'm not. But the, the reason I'm talking about this is LeBron James. I right? take LeBron James. Man, the guy made it to the end game straight out of high school. Didn't even go to college. He goes to the NBA. He's won, what, two titles? Maybe three if he wins this one, right? But how did he, how did he do it? What's responsible for the guy's success? Might be talent. You think, oh, he was talented, right? Because he's got a lot more talent and skills than the Pops have. That's what got him there. But you know what? It's not his talent that got him there. And he even said it in an interview. He said, my talent isn't what, what got me to the level of success that I'm at. It's what I did with my talent. Because the guy had talent, but he had to work that talent. He had to develop it. He had to hone his skills to get to the level where he could play in the NBA. Especially coming out of high school. Man, they were just not thinking he was going to be anything, right? But once he got there, he's making millions of dollars. Why does the guy keep doing all this work to win the titles, to be the best? He's got all the money. Why put in the work? He didn't have to. The guy's driven, right? Because the guy's got goals. He follows the fourth principle, the A, which means to be absolutely clear on why your dream's important to you. Because the guy knew he had the dream since he was in high school, and he didn't want anyone to take that dream away from him. But he knows why it's important to him. He believes in making the best life possible for himself and providing for him and his mom and his family. It's like, you know, no dad in the household. He felt like the man in the house. He had to do something. He wanted to be the best. He feels committed to that goal. The guy's got strong reasons why he wants to succeed. Now the question is to you. Because when you know your dream, you've got the vision, that's one thing, but you've got to stay motivated along the way, right? We live in a day where everything's like this, right? Fast, fast, fast. You send a text message, boom, your friend gets it in a second. You download on iTunes, you're, you listen to music in like a minute, you get it that quick. Everything's fast, surf the internet, boom, we got pages loading up. But when you're going from where you are and trying to achieve your dream, it doesn't happen overnight, there's no overnight success. It's stuff below me that you care about. It takes work. But there's times when you go along that path, right? And it's not just like easy. It doesn't just happen. There's, there's times where you get pulled off track. There's setbacks that you face. There's times where you're gonna fail. You do things, they don't work. And there's times where you may wanna give up. You're like, man, I just can't do it. But these are the times where you need that motivation within you. And the way that you get it is by knowing why your dream's important to you. So you start thinking about things, about that dream, and ask yourself, what does this mean to me? Whatever it is I want to do, why is that important to me? How is it going to change my life? How is it going to make me feel when I've got that dream? Because when you tap into that, you connect with that, I'm telling you, you're going to have all that strength, all that motivation you need when you feel like quitting. It'll keep you going on. And I'm telling you this because you can't get that dream up. You can't. Even when you think, like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I got what it takes. Just stay on. But that's what you've got to be absolutely clear of what it means to you. So we come a long way, right? You do all this work. You've got this vision. You define your dream. You remove those obstacles out of the way. Expect more from yourself. You're setting these goals. You're absolutely clear on what this means to you, but there's one more thing left, right? This is where the rubber meets the road. Because you kind of laid all the groundwork, but the thing that scares us a lot of times is actually having to do something about it. There's no way that dream's just going to fall in your lap. It's not going to come to you on a silver platter. So we got to move into action. It's the final one in M. Move into action. There's this guy, his name's Joe Vitale, Dr. Joe Vitale. This guy is like multi-millionaire. He's written like 25 books. He's been in all these documentaries. He's crazy successful. And he was talking this one time about he's in this limousine, big fancy limousine, all these successful people, and they're going off to this big fancy dinner. And everybody's talking, and he's sitting in that limousine. He's just kind of <coughs> real quiet, and he's, he's reflecting back on his life. He's thinking, how did I get here? How did I get in this limousine right now today? Because before he became super successful, Joe Vitale was homeless. He was living on the streets in Texas. He was contemplating suicide. The guy wanted to kill himself because he didn't feel like he had any hope in his life. He was just desperately unhappy. He didn't think anything would get me better. And all these years later, here he is, doing. he's living the life of his dream, he's thinking, how did I get in here? And what he said, it just like hit me like a ton of bricks. Light bulbs went off in my head. He said, when my limousine pulled up, I got in. 
Because why that hit me so hard? Because that limousine, he wasn't talking about the one he was riding in. The limousine's a metaphor for the opportunities that come our way in life. Sometimes the problem is that when we get an opportunity, how many times you feel like, I don't know if I should take it because what if I screw it up? What if I humiliate myself? What if I'm not good enough? If it's not right, I don't know if it's meant for me. If I don't measure up to the standards, so we don't take it. That limousine pulls right up, opens that door in front of us, and then we just back up and just wait for the next guy. I guess it's meant for somebody else. I'll just wait. But if we don't act, if we don't move into action on our dreams, it's never going to happen, right? So you don't want to be worried that you're going to screw up or that you're going to fail, because if you do, if you mess something up, it's okay. It doesn't mean you're a failure. Right? You can correct as you go along the way. Just take the opportunity. When your limousine's coming down that corner and it opens up the door to you, and you roll out the red carpet to you, get in. Just get in, move into action, make it happen. So we got five principles, and look, I know I, you know, I didn't just make this stuff up and spout it off the top of my head just to tell it to you. You know, I, I had to use it, I've used these principles in my life many times, but there's one thing I want to share with you you don't know about. And in 2010, it's just four years ago, I'm at a place in my life where I'm just like really, really unhappy. I, mean, I felt like a big failure, very unsuccessful, nothing in my life was going right, all these problems, wasn't living my dreams. And I just kept thinking, something's got to change, something's got to change. What I really wanted more than anything was to impact the world. I, I wanted to go out and just make such a difference in this world. And I felt like, man, I'm just not doing it. I just felt horrible about myself. I wanted to leave a legacy that my wife and my daughter would be proud of. Because when my days are gone and I'm, I'm done and I'm off this earth, I want my daughter to be so happy about me that she could look anybody in the eye and ask who her dad was, who's Kevin Yates? And she'd just look up and say it with pride that, you know, I was able to impact lives in a positive way and I made a difference and I set a good example for her. I wanted that more than anything and I wasn't doing it. So I'm sitting here in 2010. And I start to realize that I have this dream, and in, in order to fulfill this dream, I want to be a speaker. That's what I want to do. I want to go out and speak. The problem is, I'm scared of death. I can't find the courage to do it, because in 2002, I had to speak in front of an audience for the first time ever. And I'm telling you, back then, you could not drag me in front of you guys in this room today. I couldn't even speak to just five of you. And so I went and I spoke. I was supposed to speak to like a few people, maybe like 30 to 40. Didn't want to do it, but I had a job requirement. So imagine my look of shock and horror when I'm standing at the podium center stage and there's 105 people staring at me. And I'm just shaking so bad. I'm lucky I have this podium to hang on to because I would have collapsed. My legs were really visibly shaking. My heart was pounding and nothing came out right. I completely bombed, humiliated myself, said I'm never speaking again, I'm never gonna do that again. So it's 2010, I've got this dream, but I can't do it, I just can't seem to do it. It's not gonna happen. And I'm home one day and I'm checking my emails. I'm getting rid of all the junk emails. Click, 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 click. Hover the mouse over the delete button, I'm ready to click delete, but I stop because there's this one message, and I don't know why, but I'm kind of curious. So I open the message, and it's from this guy all the way over in Istanbul, Turkey, halfway across the world. He's inviting me to go over there and speak at an event that he's got. two-day event. How am I going to do that? I can't even speak to anybody for like 10 minutes, and you want me to speak for eight hours a day for two days? On top of that, they're expecting a lot, because I find out that these guys over there in these other countries, they don't get a lot of people from the United States to come over there, so their expectation levels are really high. I don't know if I can deliver that. And then I gotta fly over 30 hours to get there. I'm terrified of flying. I hate flying. But then I'm thinking, if I go over there and I completely screw this thing up, I can humiliate myself, they can boo me or whatever, and I'm gonna hate having to go through that. But if I don't go and give my dream this shot, just this one shot, then I'm gonna live with the pain and regret the rest of my life. Because I'm always gonna wonder what would happen if I've done it. Okay, so I take Take the opportunity. I go over to Istanbul, Turkey. It's the day of my first presentation. I'm in this big, huge, five-star hotel over there. This thing was crazy. 
and I'm in this giant conference room where I'm going to present. It's about 20 minutes before I go on. And I start to hear on the other side of the doors, audiences start to show up. There's voices going on. There's like all this loud sounds and everything. And it's starting to hit me now. Because now I'm starting to realize, oh my God, this is real. I actually flew halfway across the world to this country. What am I doing here? I don't even think I should be here. I don't think I can do this. I'm really nervous right now. My heart's really starting to pound. My hands are sweating like crazy. And I can't control my breathing. And I'm just kind of pacing back and forth. And I don't know what to do. And I've got those inner bullies going on in my head. And now I'm feeling really tired because of the 10 hour time difference all the way back home. I'm jet lagged, wiped out. And the audience on the other side, they're all over there. And I know the expectations are high. The guy that hired me even told me, you need to know your stuff and be very, very good. Because if you're not, they're going to call you out on it. Freaked out. Now I don't know what to do. I don't know if I'm going to be good. What if they hate it? What if they boo me out of the building? Scared. I smell something. Is that chocolate chip cookies? I'm hungry. Never mind, I'm back here. And now the technician who's fixing my PowerPoint, trying to put my slides up and he tells me the PowerPoint doesn't work. I've got eight hours of a presentation. How am I gonna present this without my slides? Panicking, oh my God, I can't do this. I gotta get out of here, I can't do it. Walk out the doors, down the hall, past everybody, I'm not looking at anybody. I can't figure out how to get out of here. This place is huge. I don't remember how I got in. I just take a way down the hall somewhere, turn somewhere, another turn somewhere. Ah, there's the door. Open the door. Oh my God, I'm in the men's room. Homer Simpson moment. Don't. <laughs> Open the stall, lock myself in the stall, sit down on the toilet. Breathe. I must be getting a little bit of oxygen to my brain. I'm just a little bit calmer. So I just need to gather my thoughts so I can figure out how to get out of here and get on the plane home. And now I'm starting to think too because my wife and my daughter are back home. If I go home and I'm on the verge of achieving the dream that I've got, it's literally down the hall. But if I go home and I give up, I tell my wife, how do I look her in the eye and tell her I quit? And my daughter, my little daughter, at the time she's three years old, I gotta look at her and tell her how to encourage her to go after her dreams. How do I do that when her dad didn't have the courage to go after his? And I start thinking, I know I'm scared, but I've, I've done the hardest part. I spent all this, these hours and hours and days on this presentation, getting it together. And I flew a 30 hour flight to another country halfway across the world when I was freaked out half the time that I was gonna plummet in the ocean and be dead. You don't know how happy I am to be sitting on the toilet in a men's room in another country right now. And even if that PowerPoint doesn't work, I know my stuff. I actually know what I gotta teach over there. I just need to get through the first 15 minutes. If I can get through 15 minutes, I think I'll be okay. And then there's the people, all those people who paid money to come see me. Man, I feel a responsibility here. I want to impact lives, and what am I gonna do, run away? They're counting on me, I owe it to them. Okay, I have to do it. I've gotta do it. Deep breath, let's go. Open up the stall, I'm back into the conference room. A couple of minutes before I go on, oh my God, the PowerPoint, it's on. It's actually working. Cool, I'm in business. My slides, start my presentation. 15 minutes in, a little bit nervous, but not too bad. Things are going good. Okay, keep going. A couple hours in, feeling better. I don't know what the audience is thinking. They're kind of quiet. I can't really read them, but I'm feeling better. Halfway through now. All of a sudden, I'm halfway through, and I start feeling this energy coming through. Feeling like, you know what? There's no place in the world I'd rather be than right here right now. This is what I'm meant to do. This is it. it was eight hours gone. It felt like one hour. Presentation's done. By the time I finish, I'm just wrapping up. I know I've left everything in this room today. Everything I got in my heart. Everything I got in my soul. I can't do anything more. It's in their hands now. Wrap it up, say my final words. And I'm just waiting. 
Somebody please make a comment, somebody ask a question, somebody clap. Audience is dead. Oh my god, here we go again. Just like 2002. I hated it. I'm ready to leave. I've got to get out of this room. All of a sudden, somebody in the back starts to stand up. A couple more people are standing up. People down in the front are standing up. Everybody, one by one, they're standing up. Everybody's on their feet. What's going on? They're clapping. They're clapping loud. And it's getting really loud. It's like turning up the volume on a stereo system. It's getting deafening. It's like the walls are shaking. It's crazy. What's up? Oh my God, it's hitting me. It's giving me a standing ovation. Stunned. I can't believe it. I didn't think I could do it. All the things I did. I actually did it. Imagine how different things would have turned out for me had I not gone back in that room that day. And I went home. Because I wouldn't have went on to speak for 14 companies and do organizations and events. I wouldn't have written two books and I wouldn't be here today. No way I would have been here today. Five principles, they're not perfect. But if you take them, just remember dream. And if you take these and you use them, They'll help you a little bit, help you feel a little bit more confident, a little bit more at ease as you move forward. When you graduate and you've got all these decisions to make and what am I going to do and going through this week and thinking about your goals and dreams in life, maybe some of this stuff will help you. There's a big lesson that I learned as well. And it's this, that our failures in life don't define us. Don't define who you are. If you try something and you fail, it doesn't mean you're a failure. It actually means you're one step closer to finding what works bigger lesson is that our challenges, you know, we've all got challenges, we all face adversity in life, we all go through it, but your challenges don't define whether or not you can succeed. It's what you do about your challenges. If you take those challenges, you hold on to that dream, you do what you can to overcome them, you don't let them stand in your way, you keep on keeping on and you don't ever give up on your dream, you take those challenges and turn them into positive change. That's what determines your success. Not anybody or anything that you control Alright, so speaking of challenges, before I go here, close. I know you all are so antsy. Who's up for a challenge? Good, everybody! Alright. You guys were awesome. Okay, so here's the challenge. Anytime you start to feel doubtful, anytime you start to feel a little bit scared, anytime you're wondering 